Today, we're having a little chat with an OG, the Kyle DePew, owner of Brooklyn Film Camera, a Polaroid and analog wonderland that emerged after Kyle's run with the Impossible Project. Just look at that squad. Let's do this. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant. My name is Ben, and welcome back to the Instant Lounge. We are sitting here once again with Kyle DePew. Welcome back to the show. Thanks a lot, man. Incredible. Glad to be back. We're wearing the exact same clothes, but we thought like continuity yeah, was. How that happen? You know, from the 8x10 <laughs> video, we just wanted to, we didn't want to shock you guys too much. Yes. I mean, we're trying to be kind. Yeah, yeah. So Kyle, we're gonna talk a little bit about your backstory today. Just give a quick overall to sort of just lead us into this. Like, what is your background with instant film specifically? Maybe not professionally yet, like we'll get into sure, that. But sure. yeah, just like your personal history with it. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, mine is similar to most Americans mm -hmm. my age in the sense that it was just baked into the fabric of life, you know, right, when I was a right. kid. I mean, yeah. Polaroid was common. It was commonly shot. Mm -hmm. um, and it always felt amazing to me as a kid. You know, I have memories right. of like, you know, be, having my Polaroid taken and going, holy cow. Yeah. And uh, the magic that is Polaroid for whatever reason, you know, mm. stuck in my heart, yeah. as I think it has also stuck oh, in your heart. absolutely, as you can tell. Um, yeah, and it's still something that I love. And that's, it's, it's that's awesome. something that I still practice, and right. it still feels really potent to me, you know, the magic of it. Yeah, and how did you go from just loving it? And I'm, I'm curious whether you, did you, have you loved it just your whole life? Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, like there, there was there, this there was unbroken a, passion for it that led into your professional career? Well, there, there was a turning point for sure. Like I had a Polaroid 600 camera, I guess when I was, um, when I was in high school, probably the time I was like 16 on mm. or something, I used to take Polaroids of my friends yeah. and, and uh, just, you know, my life. Um, when I went to college, I met a guy named Bill, uh, who was- Shout out to Bill. <laughs> Shout out to Bill. Hashtag Bill. Yeah, you're out there somewhere, Bill. Love you, Bill. Um, and he had an SX-70. And I remember this was the moment I went, whoa, you know, yeah, Polaroid yeah. can be this thing that's- uh, right really next level, you yeah. know, where I was, all of a sudden I was able to, you know, borrow his camera and take absolute control over the image, yeah, you know, manual yeah, yeah. focus, and um, the images were very next level, the, the camera was beautiful. Mm. I, I fell in love with the object of the camera. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, and then I got an SX-70 and I, it was just, it was a life-changing event, Yeah, you know? and I ne never looked back. <laughs> so. so how did you eventually end up at the Impossible Project? Like, how do you go from loving something to being inside of it? Craigslist. Actually, Craigslist.com. Yeah, Craigslist.com. Yeah, Craigslist Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Craigslist, by the way. One of the coolest internet projects to still exist. Yeah, and still be relevant. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was a, a Craigslist ad, believe it or not. I was um, living in New York. I moved to New York in 2009. Uh, it was 2011 when I got the job at uh, at the time, which was mm. the Impossible Project. Yeah. But I was looking for new work. I was working in the restaurant industry for some years and kind of trying to figure out where I fit yeah. in New York. And um, I was following the Impossible Project very closely. You know, I was buying their film. And I was on Craigslist looking for jobs and I saw that they were hiring just serendipitously. And I that went- That is an insane place to put an ad yeah. for a, someone trying to reinvent instant film. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> well, this was, keep in, keep in mind- this, I mean, That's at, amazing. At the time, this was a startup. You know? Yeah, and yeah, so they yeah. Were, right. They were creating the, the New York City division. Right, right, right. And so they needed people who were photographers and who kind of knew a thing or two about wow. Polaroid. And, um, I actually brought my, I brought in a bunch of, uh, like a photo album I'd made on SX-70 and I, I was like, I really like you guys and I, I, love like, your I, I know what you're doing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, so that was my inroad. Wow, that yeah. is so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's amazing. I mean, when I, when I think about the Impossible Project, I, I think about the recapturing of some of the upstart spirit that the original Polaroid company had to go through yeah. to invent stuff all the time. Like the, something that, that happened to Polaroid, unfortunately, is that they stopped inventing stuff yes. at a certain point. And the Impossible Project was once again, basically having to reinvent something. So I'm curious if working for the Impossible Project, you felt that that was in your everyday life, that inspiration, that drive. Oh yeah, I mean, it was cool. The, uh, so I was there from 2011 to 2014. It's very much a startup in right. in nature and spirit, yeah. um, in just the size of the team. You know, we we're a small right, team. Yeah. There, there was may, maybe fifteen of us. Um, you know, working wow. at at the time, yeah. and we were doing everything. You know, yeah, we were yeah, North, yeah. North American division, so we were we were doing the marketing and sales and wholesale, retail, uh, organizing workshops, artist relations. Yeah, we had a gallery in the space. That's so cool. um, 
camera reclamation department was in this space. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were kind of doing everything. And that was always fun about it. It was a daily right. challenge to figure out like, okay, what do we have to do? Or what are we focusing yeah. on now? You do that, you do that. Right, and, uh, right, right. It was, it was a lot of fun. And did you just feel like inspired every day? Like how much did your passion for Polaroid change or not necessarily for the worse, but something had to have changed now that you're working inside of it professionally? Right or no? For sure, yeah. I mean, it's not all rosy, right? I mean, this is yeah, like yeah. It, it was definitely fun yeah. uh, on a daily basis. But you know, there's the the mundanity of office work yeah. that must be done to yeah. make it happen. But it really felt um, it felt like a you know it felt necessary. You yeah. know, it was, it, it, I still believe it's very important that this medium is preserved and saved. Yeah. You know, I think there's a magic to to Polaroid that's that's really important. For sure. And so it, it definitely felt important. Like work felt critical Amazing. to all of us. That. And that was something that was really shared. You know, we were like, we have to do this. Yeah, yeah. We have to make that sure this like, succeeds. That is like, that is amazing. You know? yeah. yeah, that is such an yeah. amazing motivation. And it seems like to me that all the stuff, the fact that you had to be a jack of all trades, the fact that you had to learn all of those things and be able to do that every day, mm. that like trained you to run a business. Yeah. I mean, in a way. <laughs> yeah, and how did person. you get to that point? Like you, you founded Brooklyn Film Camera eventually, but like, how did you yeah. go from A to B? I guess it's a whole long story. <laughs> I mean, I never, I never took a business class in my life. Right. And uh, you know, that, that- um, The Impossible Project was your business class. Yeah. Right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, that, that was one of them. A lot of the work I've done in activism <laughs> also really well. informed, you know, like just right. how, how to Absolutely. organize, yeah. or how to effectively organize. Um, so that, that helped with a lot of it, um, but the origin story really is, so, so the very last thing I did for mm -hmm. Impossible, you know, I said, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave, I've got this idea mm -hmm. for some other stuff I wanna do in life, and they were like, cool. And then after about a month of being gone, I got a phone call and they said, hey, we're thinking about doing this, we're launching this product, um, and this turned out to be the Instant Lab, which is mm -hmm. the, the first version of the Polaroid right, Lab right, that, yeah. that has now been kind it's of rebooted to this new product. and used as Instant Back. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So they were about to launch that, and they said, you know, we wanna do this thing, we're gonna do this like US road tour, and it's gonna be five months, and we're gonna drive this like Airstream trailer across the country. Um, I'm like, really? would you want to come I'm, back I'm and test at you? <laughs> yeah. The fact that you're saying this, I, I like know this story, and I hate you. Yeah, like, yeah. It's it was a it dream. Was it was totally awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you went across the country in an Airstream with an infinite stock of Impossible Project. Film yeah. To give out to people. Right. Make them How happy. much did you use that? <laughs> we shot a lot. We shot a lot of film. We shot a lot of film. One aspect of the thing is that we had a you know little pop up photo booth, and we would go yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. events, and, right? You know, just take. Hundreds of pictures. So you would take photos of people at those events? Yes, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Did you do, I mean, what was your personal photography like on this trip? I mean, I'm just picturing myself in this. I can be professional to a degree. Yeah. I'm gonna lose control. Yeah. We've got infinite film. Yeah. Were you under control? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, uh, my personal photography kind of faltered, I think, during this point in time. It was a very demanding job. I mean, it wasn't, yeah. you know, again, very yeah. cool. Yeah, every day there was a new place to go. I'd have to that. dry, load that. it up, that. drive, you know, set up shop, yeah. do the thing. Um, but yeah, we were shooting a lot of, I guess I was shooting a lot of Americana at the time. I mean, we, we drove through 17 states, yeah. it ended up, and um, there's a lot of cool, like, just highway stuff, you know? So yeah. a lot of my personal photography at the time was, was that. It was like this American kind right, of right, right. roadside stuff. That's cool. Yeah. I've, I've, I heard an interview with the people who run Free Film USA. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. So they thought, hey, this is gonna be really fun. We're gonna be traveling around the country in an Airstream, I think it's an Airstream, yeah, like an RV or something. And yeah. we're gonna be handing out film to people. We're gonna be traveling the country. And it really turned out they were working extremely hard yeah. to develop film yeah. every day. And it was like yeah. a job job. Yeah. Like the hardest thing they've ever done. I yeah. mean, was it that or were, were you really having fun the whole time or did you? Thankfully, thankfully, instant film is self-developing, so we yeah, didn't have, yeah, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> we didn't have to do that. Um, no, yeah, it was demanding. I mean, we had to be, you know, oftentimes the drive would be four to six hours in a right, day, right. and we'd be at a new location, and we'd have to meet the people at the location and make sure everything was good, and yeah, you know, yeah. kind of troubleshoot some things that right. may not have been working. And um, but I mean, at the end of the day, it was a blast. You know, we were there with right. an unlimited supply of Polaroid film and talking yeah. to people about Polaroid, and um, it was what a way pretty, to go out. I mean, yeah, 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 it's like, all right, I'm ending my run at the Impossible Project with this like ultimate shebang dream. Yeah, yeah. And so after you get back from that trip, how are you now inventing this Brooklyn film camera business concept? Yeah. So that's happened right after that? That happened right after that, wow. yeah. So it was in my head, I mean, I left Impossible right. thinking, you know, of something like Brooklyn film camera, right. some, some kind of uh, mm -hmm. vision like that. 
Um, I knew I wanted to create a camera shop that was basically accessible mm -hmm. and Polaroid focused, mm -hmm. yet also like focused on a lot of other cameras right, and things right, as well. Right. So it was in my head and then yeah, I got back from the Impossible Tour, um, had a chunk of change in my pocket because that contract uh, was, I guess, a five month contract. Um, I guess I won't talk about the money specifically. I mean, look, it wasn't hey, outrageous. You're in an instant. We are all <laughs> open about what things cost. Yeah. And what does it cost to hire Kyle DePew to go across country? I mean, you don't have to say the figure, but five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it was more than five dollars. Okay, it was more than five dollars. Um, yeah, that's a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got back. I had some money, and I uh, kind of felt like, okay, well, let's, let's try it out. Let's, right. Let's, let's do this thing. So Brooklyn Film Camera started as a pop-up project at the Brooklyn Flea, which is right, this right, right. outdoor flea market. Yep. Had an attendance of something like nearly 10,000 people a day. I think it was 8,000 was sort of the average attendance. It's a ma massive market. Oh my yeah. God. It's a massive market. Oh, that were coming to you every day? Well, they were coming to the market. To the market, yeah. Jesus Christ. And there were, uh, I think, around 100 vendors or something. Wow. So there's, this is a really big market. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. not, not everyone would meet us necessarily. Right, right, right. But it got a lot of eyes on the project. Yeah. Um, a lot of people learned about Brooklyn Film Camera. And we did this for two years. Wow. So it was this like real flood of people coming in and yeah. meeting us. And um, we were able to network, mm -hmm. you know, and just meet people um, and create a brand. That was like the springboard to create right. a brand. And then while that was happening, you know, we were building the website, building yeah. out the sort of like e-commerce mm -hmm. infrastructure. And after two years, uh, we had a, a real, you know, physical location as well. So. Yeah, you went brick and mortar. Brick and mortar. Or, is that, yeah, that's the phrase. What like, <laughs> what like led you to making a physical location? Like, did you feel you needed to have it, um, yeah. or was it like a community space kind of concept? Yeah, it felt kind of necessary. I mean, in the you know, in the world of analog things, you know, where things are tangible. That's and, a good point. Yeah. You know, you need to touch them. It felt like, okay, right. we need to have some, you know, a place yeah. for people to yeah. come, you right. know, and uh, physically hold these objects, you yeah, know, and sure. uh, touch cameras, feel cameras, yeah. smell cameras, you know, use all five you senses smell to really, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Polaroid smells good. It smells good? It smells real good. It smells pretty good. Yeah, you yeah. gotta smell that. So, um, <laughs> well, another thing that the Brooklyn camera, or Brooklyn film camera sort of ended up doing a lot of, and maybe this is just more recently, I think, but yeah. is doing these eight by 10 shoots. Yeah. Um, I did one at the Whitney. That was an incredible installation. Yeah. I did the four by five shoot at Arson Flea. Mm -hmm. Um, that was amazing. What, what, where did this come from? What this concept of doing that for you? Well, we, yeah, I mean, I guess we were doing it at the Impossible Project. So that was right, where, right, yeah. you know, it was first, that was when it was first happening. Yeah. Um, and it was something I loved. I mean, it's a very special format, yeah. as, as you know, right. you know, there's these massive oh Polaroids God, yeah. and you get to use a big camera. Yeah. It just feels, it feels, Hashtag uh, epic. <laughs> hashtag <laughs> epic, yeah. Um, so basically, long story short, we, we were approached by the Whitney to, to collaborate in some capacity. Oh. You know? So the Whitney Museum of American Art reached out to us and said, you know, we really like you guys, and what, what's a way that we can right, do right. something? You know? And I thought, well, maybe this is the moment for wow. 8x10. You know? so, yeah. so I pitched that, um, kind of explained how it could work, and uh, they liked it. And we were brought in as artists wow. and residents of the Whitney. So now you suddenly need like a ton of eight by 10 film. How do you yeah. do that? <laughs> you, just, you just like place yeah. a bulk order with Polaroid or? Yeah, well that, that was a challenge. So luckily we had an, enough lead time where, yeah. you know, I've still got friends who work at Polaroid. So I reached out to them and said, hey, this really cool thing's happening where right. we're gonna be doing this, uh, you know, we're gonna be the artist in residence at the Whitney for this extended period of time and we need a lot of film. Can you can you make that happen? Yeah, and they were like dollar signs as eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although it's expensive to produce, so I mean. yes. Yeah. They had yeah. to prop. Did they make a? I don't know if you know this, but did they make like a production run for you? I'm not sure about that because um, I feel like it was, must have been a lot of film. Could have happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We bought I think like 60 cases of film. Oh my so gosh, it was, it was a lot of film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot, yeah. it was a lot of film. That's amazing. Yeah. So every day of your life, you are surrounded by this format. Yeah, uh, Polaroid. You know, I think most of you have heard of it. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's interesting because I've been doing this show, which has made me every day be doing this. You know, mm. every day be engaging with with Polaroid, and and you've been doing that for much longer than I have, mm. um, in, in this engaged way. And I'm curious where your head is at. Sort of, do you get a little bit tired of it? Like. Polaroid is sort of a simpler, I know you're doing other stuff and I know there's other kinds of film offered, but like, 
do you feel like there's a fresh thing every day to talk about with people and engage with people? I think it's a lot about meeting people where they're at. So there's, yeah. you know, in terms yeah. of our customers, there's like a whole arrangement of, yeah. you know, potential customers we have, which, you know, ranging from very young, you know, teenagers who have never, ever used a Polaroid camera, never yep. even seen a Polaroid picture of themselves. Yeah. And they come in and they're just like, whoa, yeah. mind blown. Yeah. And, and that's a lot of fun, you know, because you get to introduce them to Polaroid. Yeah, for sure. For, for fresh, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, there's, there's folks our age who kind of grew up yeah, with it right. and then it disappeared for a little while and now they're going, wait, it's back. Yeah, and so they're, yeah. you know, they're, they're excited about that. Yeah. Um, there's people who've been, you know, following the journey the whole way through and, you know, knew the, the followed the story of the Impossible Project, were buying the early film and yeah. now they're delighted that the film gets better and better and better. And right. so, you know, we supply them as well and help them with cameras. Um, and then there's my favorite demographic is the old people. I love them. I love well, it. When they yeah. comment, shout out to the old people. <laughs> shout out we to the old people. We are not ageist, we love your asses. <laughs> when they comment and they're like, I bought a Polaroid camera when I was one years old, like my father put yeah. it on my crib. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, the rich, the richness of that is like very satisfying to me. It's amazing. And, and being able to interact with those people that were around in the heyday, that actually appreciated it in the heyday. Mm -hmm. like, like we were talking about when we were kids, it was like just around. Like we didn't yep. think much about it, but for people who grew up where it was invented, it was a little bit different. It was like, whoa, there's this completely new thing on the market. Yes. That's like totally never been done before. Yeah. So now you can look at photos immediately after they come out. You know, it's insane. There's also something too that, you know, is, is resonant within me. Yeah but, yeah. but I think, uh, you know, older folks tend to feel a little lost in the digital world. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, the more intangible things become, they become a little lost. And it's a little hard yeah. for them. And there's a real, you know, when you take their Polaroid and they get to hold it and yeah. see it develop, they go, whoa. And yeah. it's, it's just like, I feel this too, but it feels more potent in older folks. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's really cool to connect on that level. Oh, man. And, yeah, and I feel that, this is a tangent, but I, I don't know. I just, I, so, something is interesting to me about connecting with someone mm. with technology that's mm. from their time. Yes. Like that, 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 it creates this connection that's like totally unusual that doesn't exist in any other way. Absolutely. And you just feel this kinship. It's like, oh, like you might be much younger than me, but you're really like on my wavelength. Yes. And that's yeah. really cool. Well, they, yeah, and they appreciate the craft, you know? Yeah. Photography is a craft. Oh, absolutely, And it's, yeah. it's almost been forgotten, you know, in the age of the iPhone where mm -hmm. we all carry a camera with us, right? Yeah. A very capable camera. Right. But there's nothing to, nothing to know. You just yeah, point yeah, and yeah. shoot. Yeah, right, right. And, um, yeah, there's something to, to really sharing the craft of photography with someone that's, yeah, that feels absolutely. special. Yeah. And, like, the, in the world we're in now, I think it's really interesting. I mean, obviously, I think one of the byproducts of Polaroid's return is that simply analog things are cool again. But yep. what do you think, what do you, why do you think it's back beyond that? Like, what do you think it is about Polaroids that are currently resonating with young people who are just getting into it? I think it's the same thing. I mean, I think it's that as the world becomes more digital, mm -hmm. we crave tangibility. Yeah. You know, there's sure. something, there, there's something lost in that. There, yeah. there, there's an efficiency to digital. I'm not a Luddite, you know, I'm not, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not that guy. We have Instagrams, you know, yeah, we, we have Instagrams. Do digital stuff. I, I, th I think those worlds can coexist, you know, yeah. but I think that, that the tangible world is a very important world mm -hmm. spiritually. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I think it feels good to, to touch things and to, mm -hmm. to smell things and taste things. Yeah. And you can't do that with digital, you know, uh, digital yeah. is a, a very, um, it's a very odd medium, you know, yeah. for certain things. And I think young people, although they may not have the words to say that, they feel that and they feel yeah. that deeply. And um, yeah. I think Polaroid is something that grounds us in a, a humanness actually. Yeah, you know? um, for sure. Yeah. Being able to physically interact with something is so baked into us yes. that having that experience is so different. And it produces such different fans. And like it, yes. it produces people that are so passionate and it's weird when you look at like the digital pho photography community, they're mostly just fighting with each other. They're not like, <laughs> dude, I love this, I love the tones. Like yeah, nobody's saying yeah. they love the tones because you know, it's just, everybody can do that and it just doesn't establish this warmth that mm. the analog community has, but I'm seeing a lot more in the Polaroid community, especially mm. with like, honestly, like Instagram has been this great oh, yeah. glue for us. Like everyone's coming exist, together. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's really cool. And I never really thought of Instagram that social, to be honest. Mm. Like, I just didn't use Instagram for that. Um, I thought, this is not structured to have conversations. Mm. But every day I get DMs that are like, 
amazing. And I just love talking to these people. Yeah. And I'm right. sure you're just like, are you, are you like in constant communication with new people that are coming in and asking you questions? Through Instagram? Yeah. I do you use Instagram like that? Or? I kind of try not to be. We, we have a... Yeah, do for, you have someone else doing it? For our listeners, <laughs> yeah. uh, if you want to get in touch with Brooklyn Film Camera, call us or email us. That's a much better way to get in touch. Um, yeah, I have a copy-paste uh, DM that's standard that just says, hello, please email us for oh my customer God. service. Okay, all right. The tricks yeah. are being revealed. That's why yeah. we're here in the instant. The levers line. behind the curtain. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, so, like, obviously we're in this interesting new period of Polaroid. Like, we're in the, mm. the time where it's called Polaroid again. Yeah. And there's a lot going on that is getting somewhat mixed reception from people. I'm definitely one of those guys who's into the business element of Polaroid, too. Mm. And obviously you are. And so I, I often think of things based on what is happening in their business. So like when Spectre is discontinued and people are freaking out, I'm like, right. well, why did that happen? It's yeah. like, obviously for a reason. Um, so I'm curious where your mind is at, because you've been around all phases pretty much. Where do you think Polaroid's at right now? How do you feel about how they're doing as a company? I like their direction. I think I think what they're doing right now is a yeah. snapshot of like, you know, this moment in 2020. Yeah. It seems that they're trying to expand their market and they're doing mm -hmm. that mostly through the sale of cameras, you know. Yeah. So so I type film is a big thing for them. Getting cameras in people's hands seems to be mm -hmm. a, you know, a big objective of theirs. Um, I think it's good in the long term. Um, they're bringing in mm -hmm. more people into the Polaroid ecosystem. Right. Um, they're very much in competition with Instax, you know, so yeah, this is, this is something deal. that, yeah, that is like their, obviously their number one competitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of it has to do with that. Um, and I'm not too cued into the back end business strategy mm -hmm. to be totally honest, but that's, right. that's what I perceive. And I think yeah, that's, I that's kind of the, totally. the battlefront for them. You yeah. Know, right now. Yep. Um, I'm definitely mm -hmm. in the camp of like, if they have to collaborate with a major brand and that genuinely helps them, I think down the road that will steer them in the direction of having maybe less expensive film, which I think everybody wants, yes. and improving it over time. And obviously, I'm just like, I don't know, I'm just like a fanboy, what can I say? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest about it. I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think I often, I'm, I'm in Polaroid's camp because I feel so fortunate that it exists. I mean, do you, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand the philosophy of like going nuts online about something that Polaroid did. I'm like, w why? I mean, yeah. obviously you're passionate, but yeah. don't you want the company to exist? Yeah, I, at the same time, I understand. There's a lot of people who feel very strongly about, yeah. you know, this direction of this brand. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think it's good for the brand to hear feedback about I agree. certain things, I agree. Yeah. you know, but, I um, but yeah, there's a, there's a certain level of craziness yeah. out there too. So it's, there's a certain amount of people that completely yeah. stop shooting instant film because Spectre would discontinue. <laughs> yes, and I'm like, yes. well, I don't. Did you really love instant film that much then? Yeah, can, yeah. you can live without it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Goodbye then. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna throw it to a segment on the show called "You Asked It." Viewers can send me in some questions on the Instagram at the dot Instagram, and we're gonna answer it right here. Coyote, are you ready to hear from? the boys and girls and random folks who. I'm ready, baby, let's do this. All right, let's do it. All right, Noah and his shadow asks a very interesting question. If you had a chance to ask Edwin Land a question, what would it be? Whoa, G good question, Noah. Noah also, fantastic. hi Noah. Hi Noah and uh, his shadow. Yeah, <laughs> Noah Zyla. I guess I would wanna know, you know, I mean, he Ed, Edwin was a, a visionary beyond yeah. being a businessman, right. and he um, it's a very interesting person. His vision for integral Polaroid film yeah. was very interesting, right? And he actually kind of envisioned an iPhone before there was an oh iPhone. Oh my god, I know. In the sense yeah. that you know his his um, his vision for the SX70 was a camera that was slim, could be carried around easily, right. and where the user would have to know nothing about photography. They could simply point and shoot and end up with a picture that they didn't have to do anything with. It would right. self-develop, self-terminate, self yeah. and be perfectly finished. Right. And his vision of uh, users of this camera was really wild. He, he, he envisioned um, lifelong memories, a life being chronicled seamlessly. Mm. And he imagined photo albums existing that were multi-volume and right. you know, people yeah. um, he envisioned having this. Instagram, basically. He did. Yeah. He, in, in, the, in the late 60s, <laughs> this, this guy was thinking about yeah. that. Um, so to be honest, I don't know, my, uh, my question for him maybe wouldn't have much to do with photography. It might have more to do with philosophy or, yeah. um, memory, you know, yeah. something that, I mean, he, he was a very interesting man. Um, and obviously a 
genius scientist and inventor. Yeah. But, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe something more, you know, yeah, more out big there, picture. You know? yeah. I just thought of this, but I think I would love to ask him what he thinks of Polaroid today. Like, yeah. what would he have wanted? Obviously, he died before the internet was really <laughs> around and, and yeah. like he honestly died before digital cameras were relevant. Yeah, yeah. And so obviously Polaroid would have had to have gone through a big turnover phase if he were still in charge. He would have had to have led them through that. I don't know if he was of his time to the point where he wouldn't have been able to pull that off, mm. but I'm super curious what he would have thought of what Polaroid should have done mm. to stay relevant through the digital era. Yeah. But honestly, part of me is like kind of happy they didn't. Even though I know it bit them in the ass in the end, we now have this analog product that didn't evolve into something else. Yes. That is still the original thing. Yes. And that's very beautiful. All right, on to the next question. We got the iPad here. We're doing amazing. <laughs> um, okay, Infinite One says, mm. will the Brooklyn film camera 8x10 photo shoots be happening in any other city besides <laughs> New York? And generally, we got like a bunch of questions about, is Brooklyn film camera like expanding? Where are you guys at sort of business-wise? Yeah. Um, so to answer the first part about eight by ten being in other cities potentially, um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's kind so of so it could happen. Yeah, it could happen. Yeah, yeah there's the eight by ten is taking the form of you know we're 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 for hire you know so we're mm -hmm. you know well if you're getting married and you want eight by ten at your wedding we we do that. Um, we're also actually renting the kit. It's kind of like a very new thing. We're kind of mm -hmm. testing that out, uh, but largely we're you know we're we're doing um, activations and like right. kind of art based things with the eight by 10, that's that's where the direction is headed. But yeah, the possibilities are kind of endless. You know, we're talking to a client right now who's, who's talking about having us for like a month long residency. So there's another like potential oh, residency cool. on the horizon. Um, I don't know, yeah, anything's we'll possible. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. In the age of COVID, it's a little hard to kind of like engineer to these things, but there's, yeah, there's, yeah. Some, there's some things we've got in mind. Cool, love it. Yeah. Ben Mueller Brown asks, what's the grossest camera that's come in for a restoration? <laughs> Um, we, we've had a bunch of them. Uh, one recently, was this girl had uh, fallen in a lake with her camera, oh with her SX-70. God. Yeah, and so she brought it in and was Did like... Did she get the shot, I wonder? I don't know, That's it's a good question. question. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I hope it was worth it. But um, yeah, it was just as, you know, totally rusted out, rotted out camera. Yeah. Um, had a camera one, this, this takes the cake. This, this is not a Brooklyn Film camera, this is back in the Impossible Project. We had a camera one time, we opened it up, it smelled horrible. We opened this package, customers sent it in, it smelled terrible. And we're like, what the hell is in this thing, you know? And we smelled a lot of things, a lot of smokers yeah, house, it smelled bad. Know, everybody this was next stuff. level, oh like, disgusting. God. We opened the camera up, and I swear to God, we opened the film door, and all these dead beetles were like, and I'm not, like, I don't know, 50 of them or something. Were what? Inside of this camera. What? <laughs> it was nuts. Oh my God, folks. Yeah, it Dead was, beetles? It was bad. Wow. Was standing over a trash can, shaking the SX-70, and they're just oh falling out. Oh my God. You know? Yeah. Did you was... like want to ask them what happened? Like, why did that? Did I don't you... know. I feel like I would have been like, hey, so uh, I'm not sure what the follow-up well, yeah. was on that one. But so that takes the did you stuff pressure. it full of beetles? or right. How did this happen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I your know. pet beetles, I think, got loose. Yeah. Um, Cordova Doba asks, what is your favorite memory of shooting 8x10? Favorite memory of shooting 8x10 film? I don't think there's one that totally comes to mind. I mean, we shot some celebrities at, at the Whitney. We shot Calls, which is kind of cool. Um, I like him as an artist. Um, Shot some some actresses and, mm -hmm. and actors and things like that. I think the um, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, like it sounds cheesy, but like it's actually genuine. Some of the, it's a, the best moments are shooting uh, people who are in love, you know, and, yeah. and uh, that's that. It's really it's just yeah. nice. No, yeah, honestly, totally. And we during COVID, uh, during the activations we've had during COVID, mm -hmm. there's actually been a fair amount of couples who had weddings planned uh -huh. and they couldn't do it, you know. Right. So they're trying to like do these special things for themselves, right. and so they would come for for a portrait. And we've probably done four or five of them, and uh, those those just feel really good. You know, yeah, that's amazing. I yeah. I love. I mean, this is it's not weird. I, I think they're artistically so beautiful and like mm. really sweet to look at. Yeah, especially on that format, it's so dreamy. Yeah, and it's just like wow, pe two people in love, especially yeah. in a time of so much hate. Yeah, that's seeing true too. this like very sweet thing is just, it just makes it makes my day, mm. folks. I'm a sap. I've been outed. <laughs> All right, one more question. It's from Chris Visser, at Vistafer. Do you have the best hair in the film industry? Do I have the best yeah, hair? Yeah, that's his question for you. 
Well, that dear I mean, viewers I think is up it's to up you. There. To I definitely think it's like at least top ten. <laughs> got the got the side. Yeah, shave, look at that par thing. Partial mullet. Damn, you know, I don't know. son, where'd you find that? <laughs> that is kind of hype. <laughs> all right. I mean, that's all I, I have. I feel like we, we put you through the ringer. Is there anything else you would want to add? That's it, man. Thanks that's for having it. me. Check oh out check God. out BrooklynFilmCamera.com. Yes. Um, we can supply you with cameras and film. Absolutely. Lots of other things. Yeah, and when, and uh, people can order and pick up from you right now, right? They can do that. Yep. On Saturdays uh, and Sundays? Uh, only on Saturdays, on right Saturdays. now. Yeah, okay. But that's probably changing, so I don't know how relevant that is yeah, to the yeah, piece. Yeah. Okay, say, say <laughs> once, yep, and then say okay. once, only on Saturdays. Wait, yep? <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut it in based on where you're at at the time no I'll just whatever it's fine um, well <laughs> Kyle thank you so much for being on the show once again like so hyped to have you here um, just you, your place in this industry is so significant in my opinion and um, it's just an honor to have you here and it's like surreal to see you on this like set <laughs> it's just like wild i mean you know i don't know it's, it's wild to hear that it's, yeah i mean it's really thanks for having me it's, oh, of course you, you're, you're, you've, your channel has although new been a really like impactful thing for me i think it's cool you're oh doing, that's amazing so I'm happy to be here we love youtube.com youtube.com it opens up all sorts of opportunities <laughs> all right thank you for watching in an instant go ahead and uh take the closest baseball bat and just start clubbing that subscribe button <laughs> as hard as you can stay tuned for more views tips lounge episodes, shoots, all things instant. Bye.